Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, diagnose a check engine light uh, error code on your car. In my case specifically it is a Santa Fe 2003 but uh, this applies to most cars that are ODB, uh, sorry, OBD2 uh, compatible. So what I have here is the Elms uh, 327 Mini uh, ODB2 adapter and this is the Bluetooth version. So because it's Bluetooth and it, uh, for some reason uh, it only supports the uh, Android uh, platform in uh, tablets and portable devices, but it also has software for your PC and Linux, Windows, so on and so forth, even Mac. So uh, it is compatible with those actual platforms. But if you understand if you only have an iOS device, which means an Apple device, then you need the Wi-Fi version of this actual adapter. And you can pick one of these up for $5, the, uh, sorry, the Bluetooth adapter for five bucks on Amazon, maybe $6. And if you really wanna go crazy, you can go up to $12 on one. And uh, also, if you want an OBD2 uh, adapter that is Wi-Fi, because you only have Android devices, and you need a Wi-Fi one, it's around 12 bucks. So uh, I'll post the link for this in the video description. But uh, basically what I'm going to show you how to do is how to plug this into your car, how to uh, configure it with uh, uh, the Android, an Android device. I'm using a tablet and this is just a very cheap tablet I picked up for $50 somewhere. And uh, basically it's an Android device, it's got Bluetooth on it, so it'll talk to this no problem. And I'm going to be using a program called Torque Lite and it says OBD2 and car and this is uh, the, the program that interfaces with this device to uh, read the codes, read the data coming from your car. It's pretty neat actually and also allows you to clear the codes uh, using uh, uh, the connection to this through this on Bluetooth. So that's pretty neat too. So uh, again, I've got a code on mine. I know exactly what my code is because I have other scanners. I have a scan gauge 2 that's hooked up to my car and I'll show you the actual uh, symptom that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with right now. Here you can see my speedometer needle jumping around, my check engine light is on and the scan gauge which is the digital uh, display that you see is showing at zero miles per hour. Now the scan gauge is connected to the OBD2 connector so it should be showing me the correct speed. Obviously I have an issue with the speed sensor on my car and that's what's causing the check engine light to be on at this moment. Uh, which is basically a speed sensor and I know this because I've already run the test. But I'm going to show you how to find out what your code, what your check engine light actually means using this. And then uh, uh, again, it's for ODB2 compliant cars. So if your car isn't compliant, then you shouldn't buy it. But just make sure that it is. Uh, there's what the connector looks like. So if you have one of those on your car, more than likely it's an OBD2 compliant car. Now check into, into the uh, uh, video description down below to see what uh, uh, the actual ad for this device says it's compatible with. Now if you have an airbag error or some SRS issue, uh, this will not fix it because that's not part of the OBD2 compliant uh, protocol. So you need to get something better, something like this, uh, to go and clear those codes. Now this is $150 so it's not cheap to get go and clear those codes but then again taking it into a car uh, guy or a mechanic to go check the codes and fix it is a very expensive uh, proposition as well. My philosophy is if I can buy the tool and do it myself for the same price or cheaper or maybe just a bit more than what uh, the actual mechanic will do it for, I buy the tool and do it myself because then I, I always have the tool forever and I get the satisfaction of knowing I fixed it. But back to this. Um, for basic OBD2 protocol uh, engine codes or uh, check engine light uh, issues, this will be fine with this. Now there's other free software available. I believe it's called Car Doctor as well. And uh, you can get it on the Google Play Store for free. So let's just open it up. And again, your device, okay, welcome to Torque. Your device needs to be a, uh, what do you call it? A, Bluetooth device. It needs to have Bluetooth available on it for it to work. If it doesn't have Bluetooth, it won't work with this. Uh, but if it's got Wi-Fi and uh, you will buy a Wi-Fi adapter, uh, Elm 327 Wi-Fi adap adapter, then you can uh, actually use that, that tablet. As well with iOS, it needs to be Wi-Fi. So uh, we're into the actual app itself and as you can see, it's not reading anything because we're not connected to anything and we haven't configured the talk yet. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. 
plug this into the car and show you how to uh, make the tablet talk to the ODB2 uh, adapter. On the Hyundai Santa Fe 2003, the OBD2 connector uh, is actually behind, behind the fuse box, or beside, sorry, beside the fuse box. So you're gonna have to remove the fuse uh, box panel. And as you can see right there, there's the actual panel itself. So all you need to do to take it off in, in this car is just to pull on the bottom of the, door, of the fuse panel cover, like so. Then off it comes. Now, your ODB, OBD2 connector could be anywhere. If it's not a Santa Fe or a different type of vehicle you're doing this on, it could be under the dash, it could be behind the glove box, under the glove box, it could be, I've seen some of them have them in the console. So uh, if you can't find your OBD2 connector, uh, don't fret too much, just Google your car and OBD2 uh, connector and you should be able to find it there. And uh, let's zoom into this so you can see where the actual connector is gonna go. There it is right there. And we're going, it's going to go and plug into right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, connect, the uh, actual OBD2 interface and plug it in right there. And you can see what happens when I do that. So let's plug the 327 in there, the um 327 mini, and uh, see what happens. Now when you're plugging it in, you'll notice that there's three LEDs on the back and you should see them cycle through. So let's plug it in. And there you saw the green, the yellow, and the red always it should always be on. So the red is the power and the green and the yellow are the data transmit uh, LEDs. And when it's sending and receiving data, those two will flash. So let me just plug it in again so you can see that. There we go. And nice thing about the, the 327 mini is that it's a very low profile device. It doesn't take up a lot of space back here, so you can see that I can put the cover on and leave it plugged in. I have left it plugged in for a month, two months, no problem at all. Uh, very, very slight battery drain on it, so it really hasn't had any issue on my battery at all because uh, it doesn't really draw all that much power. Um, now, another thing, you, you know, that if you want to leave it plugged in for, you know, vehicle diagnosis or telemetry or whatever, the problem that you may run into on your vehicle is that you don't have enough space to uh, you know, close the cover, or if you buy one of the Elm 327s that has uh, a Wi-Fi on it, it's about three times longer, so it'll be sticking out. Now you can buy uh, a, a, a connection uh, cable that will plug into the actual port with a ribbon cable coming off of it, and then you can plug the actual Elm 327 into the end of that cable. So it's basically an extension cable for the ODB2 port. And then you can mount it anywhere, and usually those cables are low profile, and then that'll allow you to put your Wi-Fi device anywhere you want, and you won't have the problem with that uh, uh, not being able to close the door anymore. I've got my car in the start position, so the ignition is in the start position. In other words, the key is where the car would normally be if the car was running. Uh, I, had, I don't have the car running, I just have it turned to the start position, basically on. So. That way I know that the uh, ODB, uh, OBD2 uh, connector or the connection is live. So I uh, opened up my, uh, my uh, Android device here. I'm just gonna go to settings, wherever your settings are, just go to the settings gear. And then we're gonna go to Bluetooth. And the one thing here on Bluetooth you wanna make sure Make sure you're not connected to any other device because if you're connected to some Bluetooth device, you're, uh, you know, you may have issues with this. Basically, you want to be not connected to any device before you try and pair it to a device. So you want to be the you want the OBD2 um, this Elm 327 to be the only device that you connect to. So here, I'm just going to click on search for devices. Make sure your Bluetooth is on back here. Okay, just turned it off there by mistake. But just make sure your Bluetooth is on. You're not connected to any devices. So another at the, at the bottom of these. You should have nothing saying connected. These, this thing says trying to connect, but it's not gonna connect because I've got those all those devices off. So I'm gonna wait for that to finish. And as you can see, nothing says connected. So here we're ready to search for devices. So we're gonna hit search for devices. And it's available devices, OBD2 and some U80 device. I don't care about that. I care about OBD2. So we're gonna click on that. It says pairing. It's gonna ask you for a pairing code. 
Default is either 0, 0, 0, 0 or 1, 2, 3, 4. I know in my case it's 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm just going to type in 1, 2, 3, 4, done, and OK. And there it says, hey, I'm not sure whether it's connected or not, but it's there and it should be ready to go. At this point, I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to go to my Torque Light app right here. And it gives you the welcome to Torque thing. So hit OK on that. And uh, should see up here where it's connecting to your actual OBD2. Um, now, here it says connected to ECU OK. That tells me that it's actually connected. Let's go look at the settings here. And that's this little gear again. Uh, let's see what o OBD adapter information says. Well, it's trying to sell you one, so I don't care about that. So back to your gear again. Now we're here for one thing, one thing only, and that's fault codes. So let's go to fault codes here. And you want to see what your log fault codes are. So we're going to search it right now. And I can tell you by looking at the OBD2 connector that it is actually, you know, the yellow and the uh, green light are just flashing cr like crazy. So here we're going to go to uh, show log faults. And it's requesting the fault codes. I know I have a fault and I knew it was a P0500. And uh, my check engine light is actually on right now. So I'm going to hit uh, select fault code. Now it, it'll tell you fault code P0500 vehicle speed sensor. So I know it's my speed sensor. I know what's wrong with my car, but I, and I haven't fixed it yet. So understand that clearing your fault code doesn't fix your engine problem. You need to fix the engine problem before the check engine light will actually stay off. Now you can clear it, turn it off and hope it stays off and it never comes back. But if the fault is real, in other words, if you have a problem with your vehicle speed sensor, uh, this isn't going to fix it, right? Now, if you want to see what uh, the web says about this code, just click on web, choose your browser. Let's go to Chrome here. And it will bring up a page with the details about this uh, uh, actual, there we go, this actual code. And it says generic powertrain vehicle speed idle control auxiliary inputs and basically vehicle speed sensor a is what it's saying on a chrysler it tells you what the deal is on a ford it tells you what the deal is on a gm and a nissan uh, you can also try another uh, link down here to look at more obd code things but basically i know in my case what it is it's a vehicle sp speed sensor i need to replace it i'm going to make a video on that as well but as you can see uh, nice feature so let's get out of here back to the uh torque and uh, now we know we have a code so let's go back to the little gear at the bottom here back to fault codes and it says clear uh, fault codes and, you know you can hear look at show historic faults pending faults so let's go here and there's a pending the same one so doesn't really matter. Back to the gear again, fault codes, and then go to uh, historic faults. And I'm just showing you the features. It's up to you whether you go there. No historic faults in the ECU. So again, nice features, but what do we really want to do when we come in here? Well, we know we got a fault. Let's clear the fault code. Okay, I'm going to clear the fault code here and hit OK. And that should turn off my check engine light. I see the green light on the uh, actual unit uh, blinking. And let's go check and see if I have any fault codes again now. So let's go back, fault codes, and let's show a log fault code. So it's re requesting the fault codes. And I get nothing. So it's cleared the fault code, but I haven't actually fixed the problem, which was my vehicle speed sensor. This is another video I'm going to do here, but it has turned off my check engine light. Let's go confirm that by uh, checking the check engine light and uh, seeing what we got. Let's see if that check engine light is truly off. So I'm just going to start the car up.
and yes sir that check engine light is off and uh, basically at this point um, you know the fault light is off but I haven't actually fixed the problem that caused the fault so I'm sure it'll come back which is my speed sensor but regardless I've shown you how to connect the OBD2 connector how to find your fault code and how to clear it and that was the whole purpose of this video uh, one more thing though is that um, you know this is a beautiful little device that also does something else it does actually do telemetry from your engine so if you can see right there you can see my rpms are 870 863 and my coolant temperature is 136.4 so it's it's handy for a lot more things than just clearing your uh, codes you can actually make a, a display out of your tablet if you wish and it shows you all your engine telemetry uh, nice thing about it so that's my video on how to clear a code using a cheap obd2 uh, connector the elm 327 uh, micro or mini that's it for my video thank you very much for watching uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way do me a favor click on the like button right down here and uh, you know if you wish to subscribe to my channel just click on this link up here and that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel um, okay again Thank you very much for your time and watching.